Here's an introduction to radix sort. As an example, let's say we want to sort this array of 6 integers, each integer value ranging from 0 through 999, and we want to sort this array in an ascending order so that the smallest number comes first. The first step that we need to take in radix sort is sorting the given array using counting sort, and the keys that we're going to use for that will be the last digit in each number. So it's as if using counting sort to sort an array with the values 3, 9, 0, 6, 3, and 3 in this particular case. And with that, the value that we have with the smallest key, which is 0 in this particular case, will be the first element in the sorted array. And after that, there will be values with the second smallest key, which is 3, so 53 will be the second element, and after that, 633 and 233. And we're going to keep going like that until the very end. And the key thing to remember here is that counting sort is a stable sorting algorithm. And so the values with the same keys in this example, 53, 633, and 233, they appear in exactly the same order in the sorted array as they do in the original array. And it's really important to use a stable sorting algorithm as a subroutine for radix sort, because if we used an algorithm that's not stable, it just wouldn't work. Now the second step in radix sort is sorting this new array using counting sort again, with the second last digit in each number as the key this time. Once we do that, the new sorted array will look like this. And we're going to repeat the same procedure with this new array. And this time we're going to use the first digit as the key, and you notice that there are some numbers without any number in that place, so we'll just use 0 as the key for those numbers. Once that's done, the whole array is going to be sorted. Let's now think about the time complexity of radix sort. First, we're going to define some variables. Let's call the number of elements in the array, or the length of the array, n, and it's equal to 6 in this particular case because we have 6 elements. And let's call the number of digits that we need to represent each number d, and we need 3 digits here. And to represent each number, we're using the base 10 system here. And let's call that b. So b is equal to 10 in this particular case. Now remember that in each step of radix sort, we sort the array using counting sort using one of the digits as the key. And the time complexity for counting sort is big O of n plus k, where k is the range of keys that we have for each number. And the range of keys in this particular case is 10, or b, because the key ranges from 0 through 9, and it's always an integer. And so each of these steps takes big O of n plus b in time. And we need to repeat this procedure 3 times in this particular case, or d times in general, so the time complexity for the whole algorithm of radix sort will be big O of d times n plus b. And this is quite fast when the range of input is fairly limited compared to the number of elements that we have in the array. And in that situation, depending on the size and the nature of the input, it can perform better than an optimal comparison-based sorting algorithm such as quicksort or merge sort, which would take big O of n log n in time. And one last thing to note here is that there's a range of values that we can choose from for the value of b. We chose base 10 just for simplicity and just to show an example, but we could have chosen for example base 100, base 2, 4, 8, or any other positive integer for that matter. And this choice will essentially come down to making a trade-off between time and space, because the larger value that we choose for b the more space is required for the counting sort step. But at the same time, a larger b or larger base will imply a smaller d or less number of digits for each number, so it'll take less time to sort the array using radix sort, as long as b is less than n.